A Letter to Ethel by Carolyn Rowe Hagens Dear Ethel, Well, I'm just home and it's ten o'clock at night, would you believe? I was out with Brenda. You remember she was at school with us. Always clever, that one. Won all the prizes. Mind you, I did get the needlework prize once. Made my year. Anyways, we went down to Kobo and sat on the seawall with fish and chips, watching the children playing and swimming. Do you remember how we shivered with cold in the sea? Well, they don't seem to these days. I reckon the temperature's warming with this climate change thing, eh? We watched the sunset. It's got to be the best in the world, looking out to Gross Rock, waiting for the green flash that only a very few ever see. Me and Brenda reckon we saw it one time. We kept our eyes fixed, and the conditions must have been just right, as there it was. Not so much a flash, a bit more a simmer, but green all the same. Well, I got to thinking about our young days. Oh, we had some fun, us, eh? Remember the Sunday school picnics? Highlight of our year, they were. I bet them youngsters wouldn't think them fun, eh, mon dieu? What with no mobile phones or fancy cafes? No cars either, or very few. We must have been about eight or nine this particular year. I reckon the ages ranged from little Enid, at about six, up to John, who was about thirteen. I bet he thought he was too old for it all then. Well, old Lloyd turns up with his tomato lorry. Can't remember how he got to the church hall. Must have walked, I suppose. But we piled into that lorry with our mums telling us to remember our manners and be good. I'll bet they had a great day with us all out the way. So off we go, perched on benches in the back of the lorry, screaming as we went round a corner and laughing as we hung on for dear life. Old Mr and Mrs Baker were in charge. Well, they seemed old to us, eh? Old Lloyd dropped us off at Lancress. We all jump out the back and run to our usual dip. Can't do that now, eh, Ethel? Those golfers have taken over, extended the golf course right up to our dip. It was sheltered there, out of the wind, and right opposite the slip, so we could run down to the beach for a swim. We'd splash about until we were so cold we shivered and would run back to the dip to snuggle in our wraps. The picnic Mrs Baker and the mums made were the best ever, eh, mon dieu? I can remember ham sandwiches, cheese, and my favourite, strawberry jam. A packet of crisps with the little blue salt packet, Mrs Baker's homemade sausage rolls. I could just go one of them now. Oh, those sausage rolls. Of course, Jane's mum always made those delicious butterfly cakes with butter cream, and we washed it all down with homemade lemonade. No swimming after lunch, of course. Couldn't swim on a full stomach. So we played rounders instead, eh? When I think, all that food, and then we tumbled down the grass slope and had a game of rounders. Hey, do you remember John hitting the ball onto the green of the golf course? Those golfers went mad waving their golf clubs and shouting out something about blowny kids out of control these days. We fell about laughing, especially as the ball ended up right on the hole. If that ball had been smaller, it would have been a hole in one, eh? I reckon that's what upset those golfers. We could outplay them. It was always sad when the day ended and Lloyd turned up again with the tomato lorry. I'll never forget Mrs Baker's words. I counted them in and I counted them out. Not very well that day, eh, Ethel? How I loved those rides back. We sang Old MacDonald's Farm at the top of our voices. Mind you, I always seemed to be the pig. <coughs> Someone always had streamers and we hung them over the side. Everyone waved and called out as we drove past. Such happy days. Hey, do you remember when we arrived back at the church hall and all our mums were there, pleased to see us safe and sound, giving us hugs and asking if we'd been good, when all hell broke out? Where's Enid? Anyone seen Enid? Old Mrs Le Cheminant shouting and running around, frantic, going from child to child. Mrs Baker looking anxious. I counted them in and I counted them out, she just kept saying over and over. Well, she either couldn't count or counted someone twice, eh, Ethel? Because Enid wasn't there, and she being the youngest at six. Oh, poor Mrs. Le Cheminon was beside herself. 
Luckily, Lloyd took control and ordered Mrs. Baker and Mrs. Le Cheminot into the lorry and shut off so fast they nearly fell off the back. I didn't even know that lorry could go so fast. Anyways, it turns out when we got back to Lancrest, they found little Enid as happy as could be, eating ice cream at the kiosk with a couple of the golfers. They'd found her in another dip, snuggled up in her wrap, fast asleep. I guess it had been all too much for her. Seems those golfers weren't so bad after all. They reckoned someone would come back for her, so just waited. No mobile phones then, eh, Ethel? Oh, Ethel, remember how we all waited in the hall, with all the mums chattering and asking us if we knew anything? It seems the adults thought the children were watching her, and the children thought the adults were, and it turns out no one was. I remember when little Enid came running into the hall, looking totally unscathed from her ordeal, and the mums not knowing whether to hug her or tell her off for the worry she'd caused. We all wanted to know what had happened, eh, mon Dieu? But Mrs Baker said that's enough for one day, and sent us all home. You know what, Ethel? I still chuckle when someone says, I counted them in and I counted them out. Happy days, eh? Anyway, take care of yourself. Until next time, Alla Pashoin, your friend, Sheila.